Hi, my name is Stacey Gussain. I'm 26 years old. I'm currently living in Pretoria. I am a podcaster and have been for two years and my day job is a surgical spine representative. I honestly would say representation. I was inspired in, I don't know which year it was, I think it was, um, I know her name was Mia. She really inspired me so much for representation um, of different body types and body shapes. I live by healthy, the term healthy isn't really a size, it's a lifestyle. It's the choices you make every single day and having grown up with asthma and um, IBS and having issues myself, it inspired me to study my degree in human movement sciences and physiology. And from then, I started my podcast to start educating people on what it truly means to be healthy um, and started making decisions every single day. And Wildcat, the brand, encompasses all of that for me. It encompasses health as a lifestyle, not just, let's just look pretty. It's every single day making the choice to eat properly, to fuel your body, to sleep well, to train every day. Um, and I truly believe that I am a representation of versatility and somebody who's trained really hard and has a very sporty look and to bring that into the modeling industry and into the beauty industry is something that definitely needs representation. And I do believe that Wildcat, the brand in, um, encompasses that. And that's why I think that I entered. Singing. <laughs> I love singing. <clears throat> <laughs> she only said goodbye with words. I died a hundred times. You go back to her and I'll go back to us. I love walking. I love walking with my dog. Uh, I have a cute little Pomeranian. She's like a little fluffle. Um, so I love walking and I love cycling. So I constantly cycle and go for walks. And then I love to swim. So I was a competitive swimmer for like my whole life. Um, so I really, really love swimming, even though it wrecks my hair, I will do it. <laughs> the chlorine is not good, <laughs> um, but I really do love swimming and gym. Bubbly, very bubbly and loud, extroverted. I feel like goes in one, one word, um, <laughs> uh, because I just, I don't know. I think I can bring an energy to a room, to a space all the time. Um, I rarely get very rarely get days where I'm like, I get focused, but I don't get like down and quiet and stuff. Um, shem. But anyway, <laughs> and then another word for me, I think would be very loyal. Um, I'm a very, very loyal person and disciplined also because um, I can just really set my mind to something and work really hard for something. Um, and then I think I would say multifaceted because I just like doing lots of things. So I said to Kyra um, that it's, a lot of people just know the quote that says, um, a jack of all trades and a master of none. And that was always a big thing for me. I was like, yo, but I really like a lot of things. But the rest of the quote is, a jack of all trades and a master of none, but a master of none is a better than master of one. And that's crazy because it just allows you to just explore so much more in life. I don't know if this is really much a social issue, but I'll talk about it. Um, I think something that I'm very passionate about is the misrepresentation of the fitness industry and the health industry. Um, there's a lot of miscommunication when it comes to the actual truth on health, wellness, fitness, supplements, training, uh, eating. Um, and that's something that I'm very passionate about talking about. And that's why I started my podcast, because I was sick and tired of people saying certain things and allowing others who don't know as much about the topic to feel a certain way about something that isn't necessarily the truth. Um, so the truth in terms of the wellness and the fitness industry is super important for me to bring across. And it's super important for us to bring across um, a very direct way of saying, this is how you do certain things. This is what this actually is based on science, based on actual true evidence, not just opinion. I think something that i've personally seen a lot is like uh weight loss has always been massive it's like the i think it is the biggest 
industry in a sense in the world um, and the miscommunication or the misinformation that's the word the misinformation about the weight loss industry is just enormous um, and it, it's it's more about promoting looking a certain way instead of what you actually feel like on the inside because when I was at my lowest weight as lean as physically possible which was for Miss South Africa last year where I did a full-on prep um, I was feeling my absolute worst on the inside I had no energy um, I had brain fog like never before and it was the misrepresentation of what it means to be fit and healthy to what it actually means to be fit and healthy and I'm feeling a lot healthier now than I ever was at that low weight that I was at um, so I just think the misinformation about the weight loss industry, what you should do to lose weight, um, how you should feel, what you should look like, um, unrealistic expectations of waking up at like four in the morning to go for a jog when you don't necessarily maybe like jogging. Um, it's certain things that you need to just do because it suits you and, and do it because you actually like it um, and be more focused on what you're actually feeling like and the lifestyle thereof instead of doing it because this person said that the 30 day diet of eating fresh air and dried fruit works you know it's not real and I don't like that people must love themselves for who they are and if you're sporty and short that's amazing and if you're tall and skinny that's amazing there is a place for everybody I think going back to basics is important so movement is so important I think if we go all the way back to generations our parents' generation, or even older than that, um, they were so much more active than we are. We're very much sedentary. Um, so I would say, go back to basics of just getting your movement in. Um, and that means parking further away from a grocery store. It means not taking the escalator and take the stairs. It's the simplest things that people don't actually think about that actually make the difference. Because it's energy in versus energy out. So if you are expending that energy throughout the day in the slightest things that we do i mean if you have a little child you're constantly moving you're constantly getting up and down you know incorporating that in your lifestyle instead of just sitting and being sedentary i mean there is a time and place for that don't get me wrong but go back to basics of just getting more movement in your life doing things that you like i've never been a person to like running don't ask me to run i don't like it so i will walk and that's something amazing for me. I love cycling. I will cycle all the time. I will not run. It's just not who I am. So go back to basics of movement. And in terms of nutrition, fuel your body. Fuel your body. Start noticing what the food that you're putting into your body is doing to your body. Um, like if you, for instance, feel really sluggish after a meal, that's not something that your body wants. That's your body physically telling you, mm, I don't know if I'm processing this well, try something else. So start fueling your body a lot more. Focus on getting your vitamins and minerals in in terms of your nutrition instead of supplementing that. Um, and just go back to basics. Really and truly go back to basics. I think social media is definitely a double-edged sword. It can either work for you or against you. I think it's super important for us to balance that in our lives. There's times where I need a break from social media and I will take that because it's really good for you. I think social media can lead to a lot of comparison um, and that's where it, that's where the double-edged sword comes in. Um, but I also think social media is such a powerful tool to expand your knowledge and lo I love knowledge, I love growth. So I've really, I really enjoy that part of social media. Um, and you also need to filter what you are consuming. Um, so I try and filter what I'm consuming in terms of am I consuming something that's going to benefit me or am I consuming something that's going to detriment me in the long run and um, so I think social media can be used really powerfully in both of those ways um, bad or good um, but for me it's a very powerful tool that I can use to grow and learn and I'm very grateful to be able to have that. I think going back to what I said social media you have to control social media or it will control you so filtering what you put out there and what you allow it to do over your life is super important so for me I'm not necessarily in terms of a relationship I'm not someone to post about my relationship on social media predominantly for the fact that I it doesn't need to be anyone else's business except mine and my partner's. I don't need to prove anything. I don't need to prove my love by showing it to everybody else. Um, there's a time and a place for it, but I think you need to set those boundaries for yourself. 
and I've got a very good balance of doing that. I know when to take a break from social media. I know when I'm leaning into comparison. I know when I'm, I don't know. I just, I feel like I've, I've got the knack for balancing my life with social media and not allowing it to control me and my thoughts anymore because it really did have a very big impact on me when I was growing up in a sense because you're very focused on I'm going to post this because and at this time because this is what my follower is going to like and there's definitely a time and a place for that but are you allowing that to control you or are you just truly doing it because you're like I want to inspire someone with this content I want to put this out there because I think it looks really cool instead of being so focused on what everyone else is thinking so much knowledge on fitness and health I love um, beauty as well love beauty tips um, so very much I mean the fitness industry is always evolving so it's good to learn new exercises love that um, new uh, recipes oh my word I love cooking in my whole life <laughs> um, I really love new recipes it really inspires me a lot um, and also seeing how other people are creating content or how other people are um, getting better financially I don't know for lack of a better word like I love uh, um, I don't know like I want to be successful and so watching other people who are successful in certain uh, fields is for me super cool and super inspiring and to listen to how they did that and what they did is for me very inspiring so that's the type of content I love I think through different aspects of my life different people have encouraged me um, I think growing up I very much looked at my mom and my grandmother for so much inspiration and they truly taught me to be the woman that I am today and be confident in who I am today and sit here and truly be at peace with the woman I am. Um, but I mean, through different stages, you get inspired by different people. Simon Sinek is absolutely incredible and inspires me to, to do things with purpose, to do things with knowing why you would want to do something. Um, I mean, the list goes on, but I think in different aspects of your life, you get inspired by different people. I'm very much a logical person, so I don't like pondering on something for more than it needs to be pondered on for. Um, if I'm, if a challenge or an obstacle is, like I'm faced with that, I'm very much like, this is the issue and I will allow myself to have, especially if it's an emotional thing, I'll, as a woman, I will allow myself to experience that emotion and then I will go immediately to, okay, what is the solution? I'm very much a practical, logical person in that sense. So I'll very much go into a step one, do this, step two, do this, three, four, and five. Um, and that has been my success in terms of stress and high stress situations um, is really just having a logical approach to it and, and allowing myself to feel emotion where emotion is necessary, but not to let it overtake me in that sense. Um, but there's nothing that I, I mean, Training helps me a lot as well. It clears my mind so much. I train six days a week for that reason. Um, but if it's a physical situation that you're faced with now, that's kind of the steps that I do. When I was younger, I was very much like, she's doing that to do this. I think I was too immature to understand that I shouldn't compare myself to people and I shouldn't look at someone else and be like, that's the way in which I should run. So I think I would tell myself, stay in your lane, run your race, Focus on who you are and your strengths because that's in the end of the day what's going to be your success and the reason why you succeed in life is because of who you are and your uniqueness that you bring to the world.